Hello, welcome to Soulprint Intuitive Tarot for December 7th. Jerry thought that we should give you a little bit of a canine feline update. So he's here to start the whole thing off. Um, first of all, you're not going to see the puppies today, but Skittles is doing very, very well. He's recovering nicely um, from his surgery, considering he's an, he's an older guy. Um, he's doing really, really great. So uh, we're really happy about that. Tika's just fine, the little black puppy. She's fine. So my eldest daughter, Victoria, has moved, and she has taken little Atticus with her. And slowly but surely, Jerry is going to work his way over to where she is. Um, but he's going to be visiting all the time because he's well aware of the fact that he's a, a rock star. So I want to just tell you a really short story. Speaking of pets and reincarnation, since that seems to be a theme I'm on these days. So when I was around about my early 20s, um, a cousin of mine had a dog. And this dog had one litter, one puppy in the litter. And that puppy was a chocolate brown poodle who came to us. And his name was Toby. And Toby lived a very long and happy, healthy life until he was about 18, and that was when he left. In fact, he left when my kids were babies, baby babies. So then we moved from, th from the place we were in, and about, I don't know, three years after we lost Toby, my youngest daughter came to me one day, and she said, Mommy, there's a kitten outside the house who wants to come in. So in came the kitten. We soon discovered that this clearly had been a cat probably that had been dropped off in the country because she was, you know, she was used to people in, in litter boxes and stuff. Um, we soon discovered, though, that she was the reincarnation of Toby. So that little mon monkey was with us all the way through the kids growing up. And we lost her three years ago around Christmas. So... Um, we knew that after Christmas, after Crystal passed into the light, that we were going to want to look at bringing another um, cat into the house. So before anybody could even think, um, a friend of my eldest daughter contacted us and said that um, she had this kitten that needed to find a new home. So I would like you to I would like to introduce you to Nova. She is nine weeks old. We absolutely believe that she is Toby <laughs> Tinkerbell returned. Her name is Nova. She's nine weeks old. She meows like a siren. She's the cutest little thing. She likes to sit on people's shoulders. Yes, you do. You like to sit on people's shoulders. We were actually thinking of calling her instead of Nova for like, you know, birth, new. Um, we were actually just thinking that we might change her name to Polly because she likes to sit on people's shoulders. Don't you love her meow? She just sounds like a siren. All right, little girl, off you go. Go play Speedway. Whoop, whoop. Little girl, go play Speedway somewhere. All right, I'm just going to pause because uh, we have to let Skittles back in the house and then I'll be right back to you. Thank you for that. So I hope you enjoyed that. We are aware that Crystal is coming back. Um, and there's a third cat that we actually think may be surfacing in the next little while. So before you know, we'll, we will be once again up to our full contingent of animals. Five seems to be the number that we, we fluctuate with in this house. So enough about animals and pets. Um, for those of you who... Um, enjoyed or were happy with or found helpful the grieving video that was released yesterday on the positive soul print um the, the soul print positive energy circle i'm i'm very glad so i want to take to look at uh, take a look today at um sort of what the heck is going on politically. Now, we've touched on the Trump family, and, and Trump seems to be doing his level best to absolutely destroy um, any chance of Republican voters um, voting 
in the Georgia runoff. I mean, he's got people out there telling him, uh, you know, saying, no, no, don't, don't bother voting. The whole thing is rigged. I don't know whether they're just trying to, I don't know what they're doing, but they're out there like lunatics talking about how people shouldn't vote. And if they think they're turning off the Democratic voters, they're insane because who they're turning off is the Republicans. Um, so there's that going on. And then um, Trump's been doing a couple of these like rants, right, where instead of trying to support the race, he's harassing the governor of Georgia to switch, flip the election results, still hasn't given up on that. And he's also not really doing anything that would encourage or support the Republican um, people who were running, in fact, in both cases, senators who are running for re-election. I mean, neither one of them have any business being a senator in the first place. They certainly don't, um, you know, it's not going to be a good thing if they win the second. But so I want to just take a look at the Trump supporters. What are they thinking? What's going on in their head? How are they feeling? What, what do they make of this? So I thought we would take a look at that today and see if we could get some answers. Certainly energetically, I can tell you that um, both Democratic contenders um, for senator in Georgia, their energy, the energy of them winning is getting stronger and stronger. So we must, you know, keep up uh, the fight, be vigilant, do whatever you can to support them, especially, of course, if you're in Georgia, um, because we really need, or you really need, I'm not, I'm not American, um, that Senate to be Democrat majority, because otherwise that Mitch McConnell is just going to do what Mitch McConnell does, and that that's going to make it really, really difficult for Biden to actually get some stuff done that desperately, desperately needs to be done. So here we go. Push this back. Come on down. I have a question. Okay, so tell me about Republican voters. Tell me about Republican voters. Tell me about Republican voters. Okay, so <clears throat> there are some okay, who um, are sort of of that mindset of, well, we live in America, we have elections, and whoever wins the election holds the office. End of statement. We like Trump, we love Trump, we supported Trump but he did not win. It's clear he did not win. And so we're going to have to move on. Whether we wanted a, uh, a Democratic president or not, that's what we have in Joe Biden. And I think for some people, they sort of feel um, kind of like, well, at least he's a known entity, right? He's been in government for a really long time. We're aware of him. You know, I find it fascinating that, um, so, you know, this was the choice, right? It could either have four more years of Trump destroying the country and by extension, the planet, or you could have voted for Joe Biden. The people that intrigue me the most are the people who are like upset that Biden won because 25 years ago, he voted for something that he shouldn't have voted for. And it's as if, People think that time freezes and nobody can make a mistake and nobody can evolve and learn from the mistake. It's, it's sort of a fascinating look when people hang on to this one or two little things and then they're like, well, no, they absolutely can't, can't be because I, there was a lot of that talk around Amy uh, McGrath too, that, well, she did something wrong and so therefore, but you have no other choice, right? <laughs> um, it's just a fascinating way that I guess the mind sort of works, right? If you're inclined to really like them, you're more forgiving. If you're not inclined to like them, then you really, really don't 
um, cut them any slack. So this is kind of the, I'm, I'm ranting for a reason. So this is kind of what's going on. So you have that group of people who are like, okay, well, he won fair and square. We don't have to love him, but he won. And it's not only he won, it's whoever won the elected office, okay? Then you have that other group. And that other group of people is still donating money to the confused one. They're still supporting it. They're out there, you know, going on and on about how the election was stolen and fraudulent stuff went on. And listen, Democrats know or certainly have heard stories about votes that were destroyed in one way or another when it came to Democrat votes. Um, and I don't have any information about votes going in the water or out of the water or being thrown in the garbage or whatever it is, so I can't really comment on that. But there is an awareness that there were a lot of things, just the post office itself, um, that were done to really damage um, people who were voting Democrat or getting those Democratic votes in. But despite that, um, there are certain Republicans who are just determined to believe that whatever Trump says is golden, and he says it was stolen, and so therefore it was stolen. They don't do any um, independent thinking or, you know, logicking things out. They don't look at anything rationally or reasonably. It's just what he says goes, and that's it. He, you don't have to think beyond what he says because he said it. Meanwhile, Trump continues to live in this delusional world. Now, the question is becoming, you know, is Trump really living in that delusional world or is he sort of amplifying um, because he needs the money because he has all of this legal problem coming at him and he needs those big donations. He needs that revenue stream. And the Republicans who are not going to let go um, are continuing to feed that need Trump has for outside money. So that appears to sort of be the dynamics that are going on um, for the most part as the base, as we just sort of look at the beginning part of this reading. Now, so as I was saying, right, there are some people who have said, I didn't like it, I don't love it, but he won fair and square, the decision has been made, let it lie. There's this other group of people who are just not going to let go. They do not want to believe that the promise of another four years of Trump has been lost. They don't want to believe that the dream they held for whatever reason, whatever it was that attracted them to Trump, they don't want to accept the fact that that is over. And, you know, it's kind of sad, right? Because it's going to take a little bit of time. But as time unfolds, certainly I want to say over the next 6, 8, 10, 12 months, there is going to be so much information that comes out um, that it's going to be interesting, you know, from a more um, realistic and logical perspective to see how these people actually assimilate the information that is going to come out about all of the things that were going on in the Trump administration with the Trump family and money, um, with foreign actors that should not have been going on at all. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how they sort of assimilate that and whether they continue to, um, you know, carry on as if there was some great theft that occurred in the election. But, you know, this is the thing. Justice is coming whether, frankly, those people like it or not. They can continue to fight the war, but look, they may, you know, there's going to be a group of them that kind of hang in there, just not because they even, at this point, down the road, it's not even going to be so much because they love Trump, but because they just like the fight. They just want to be aggressive. They just want to push back against what they see as, you know, too much government or too many rules or big brother or whatever they think. But 
that momentum is going to lose power. Now, the thing is, we shouldn't just sort of clap our hands at that and say, thank God it's over, because I actually think that they're going to crawl back under a rock and um, they're going to become quiet. And, you know, sometimes, um, you know that expression, right? Um, keep your en enemies close, but your no, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. It, that's one of those things, right? As long as, as long as they're sort of in your face, you at least know what the heck is going on. It's when they go silent that in some cases they can be a little bit more dangerous. But it doesn't feel as if there's going to be a lot going on right now. I'm not seeing anything going on around the election, uh, the inauguration. I'm not seeing big protests. I'm, I'm just not. I know other readers have, and that's that's fine. We you know don't always access the same information. But I kind of feel like this is a balloon that is just being like deflated um, or a tire, you know, that's going flat. It's just losing its oxygen. It's losing the air. You also really need to be aware that, the, you know, the reality of a sort of the money, you know, in some ways, Trump is not unlike at all those evangelical um ministers or preachers who are, you know, we, the more money you give to me, the closer you are to God or whatever it is. And however they deliver that message, it boggles my mind. So frankly, I don't pay a lot of attention to them. Um, but there is that sense of, you know, give more, give more, because somehow there's a reward in it for you. And at, in, in time, they're going to come to realize that maybe that wasn't quite um, the truth. But many of them are going to really, really just want to hang on to the belief structure that they have. But for a lot of you um, who have sort of lost a family in the last four years, who have sort of, you know, kind of gone a little AWOL with you because of some of the things that they believe, um, when it came to Trump and politics, you're going to see sort of a, a shifting back. And, you know, probably not throwing it in their face is kind of a good idea. Um, just allow them to sort of drift back. And, and, and I'm well aware of the fact that there are some relationships, particularly friendships, that really may never transition back to the way they were. Because in some cases, you know, there was a real eye-opener about people that we cared about, loved, liked, whatever it is. And the way they saw things, the way they... Um, believed and felt that just was not in keeping even with our own perceptions of who we thought they were. But there are going to be some of those that sort of drift back. And certainly within a family, if it is possible, it's always better, you know, to, to invite them back into the fold um, if it's possible. And I appreciate that sometimes, you know, it's not. They're going to hang on, you know, those Trump voters, they're going to hang on to what they believe. And Trump is going to continue to dangle that carrot in front of them as long as they serve a purpose. Now, do we think that's going to go on for a really long time? Well, it's going to go on for a little bit longer. But ultimately, it's going to come to an end. And listen, any of you who are thinking that Trump and or Don Jr., um, or worse, Ivanka, are going to run for president in four years. Even if they do, they are not going to be the nominee, okay? And I don't actually think they're going to run. I think they're going to have so many legal problems that the last thing on their mind is going to be trying to get on top of everything else, figure out how to, you know, run an election. But, I, so don't, Concern yourself with it. Let that go. Don't give that energy. Because we know what happens when we give something energy, particularly something that worries us or scares us. Um, it amplifies. And that's the last thing that um, we need to do, particularly when it comes to the Trump family, because they're such piranhas, right? I mean, they literally are energy vampires and they suck it. Um, right out of us. And so we need to be very vigilant that we don't um, give those kinds of thoughts any energy. But I really do not see them looping around. I know there's some Republican strategists who think that might happen. 
at this point, I for sure don't see it. I see, you know, their lives, the Trump family's lives, frankly, in a lot of ways, becoming a very, very difficult place to be going forward. Um, you know, some more than others are going to have harder times. Their business is going to suffer whatever, you know, and let's face it, they're no longer these big shot developers. All they are is licensing. That's what they do. And, you know, so yeah, are they going to try and play on the president's name, you know, on, on Trump being a president? Sure they are. Of course they are because they have no scruples. Um, but I just don't see it working for them. And Donors who gave to Trump because they wanted the Republican agenda to go through, for the most part, have figured out, you know what, we can do, we could have accomplished the same thing or most of the same thing with any other Republican in office. We don't need to go through the insanity of another Trump in office. So I don't, and this is the thing, right? The very people that Trump is milking for all their worth. I mean, their last penny or two, when there's no stimulus coming, there's no money coming, they're in, in desperate need. But, you know, Trump has said, listen, the COVID's not real. And so, you know, I don't know what you guys are all worried about. Let's just get this com country open again. Those who are still hanging on to that, um, they're not the ones who can actually then afford Trump-type um, merchandise, okay? And that's kind of the great irony in the whole thing, is that Trump needed to latch on to people who were desperate to have somebody tell them what to do. And I think we've talked about that before, that sort of need to be told. Um, you also, you often see that sort of same dynamic with people who are very, very connected to a church, evangelicals, but they are not exclusive. There are other religions where you get these people who are like, you know, I don't need to think because my minister, my pastor, my priest tells me what to think and that's good enough for me. There are those people on the planet and that's okay, um, but they are in need of that sort of firm hand and they are in need of that person telling them what to think, what to do, and what to believe. Um, Mitch McConnell, this is interesting. Mitch McConnell looks like he's going to be having a bit of a, a, a challenge coming up. And, you know, it's so curious about Mitch, right? I mean, he has this... Um, approval rating in, in Kentucky that honestly is like really close to single digits already, 13 or 14 percent, but somehow he keeps winning elections. But he is going to be, um, there's going to be things coming up in his world that are going to prove difficult for him to defend himself against. Um, and, and we know we've talked before, like Mitch just doesn't seem to be... Um, in the big picture, as you project going forward, the trajectory forward does not have a very strong Mitch McConnell influence. Um, so that's going to be sort of curious to watch and see how that unfolds. But, you know, this is one of the things to remember and realize. And I mean, that's part of the reason that it was so confusing for those of us who were watching it from the sidelines, right? It was like the more people tried to act like Trump, those people who supported Trump supported Trump, but that behavior did not, op, you know, did not always translate into those same people voting for Republicans. So that is sort of this curious thing that went on. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of the Trump voters um, are kind of finding themselves in a place where because of the things they believe, they really are putting their health in jeopardy. They really, really are putting their health in jeopardy um, because they're not paying attention to what needs to be done as far as COVID is concerned. And um, that is frustrating and crazy making, but it really is sort of the reality of the situation. For the rest, <laughs> um, as far as, you know, what the country can expect, you really are going to see a, a sort of a return to normalcy. 
um, uh, the economy flowing again, COVID, you know, getting under control. I mean, everybody by now has figured out that if you don't control COVID, you don't control the economy. It is not a binary choice of one versus the other. They have to work in harmony with each other. There has to be that yin yang balance because without it, you know, it's like three running steps ahead and then 25 backwards because because people out there are doing really dumb things in terms of protecting themselves and keeping themselves safe. So, you know, there's going to be a slow recovery, but it feels like it's going to be sustained and it feels stable. So that's all really good, right? That's super good news because you can't have a recovery that is just instantaneous. This thing is not gonna vanish, you know, spring, summer, we're still going to be getting the vaccines. They're still going to be, but slowly but surely, more and more people are going to be re-entering the worst workforce and their businesses are going to be opening up again. And yes, yeah, some of them are never coming back. And sometimes some of those businesses were big businesses, but they will be replaced. Nature abhors a vacuum. Always remember that. And so what has gone will return again. Unfortunately, these people, the Trump Republicans, they're going to, as I said, they're just going to stick together. But I got to tell you, it feels like as time goes on, they're going to become sort of more and more bewildered, confused. Because what's going to happen is once they have served the financial purpose and the emotional purpose that Trump requires of them right now, once he doesn't need them anymore, um, they're not going to continue to get those messages. And so what you're going to end up is with groups of people who are repeating old doctrine, right? Old statements, you know, it, it then goes in the way of, you know, great conspiracy theories, right? Um, but as I said, more and more, you're really going to see that this is going to, um, It's going to sort of peter out. Um, and honestly, for those people, I really hope it does. Because you know what? They need to start taking care of their lives. And their lives are their health and their stability and their financial security. And all of those things they were so willing to completely just relinquish under Trump. They need to start pulling that back and getting their lives um, moving in a forward way without the hate and without the divisiveness. And, you know, that's going to happen. I think you're also going to see a lot of Republicans who, um, going forward, are not going to be very quick to continue to talk about the fact that they voted for Trump or they supported Trump. It's going to be like the real hard-edged people that aren't going to let it go. Overall, take heart from the fact that the country really is moving into smoother territory. Um, sort of, you managed to escape the tidal wave. You really did. Um, and that bodes well for the next little while as things unfold. And I once again caution you to be very, very careful that you don't take this done attitude and you have learned that people of any country need to pay t attention to what the heck their politicians are doing and continue to use their voice to ensure that those politicians are doing what their constituents want, what the citizens of the country want. Now, so there we have it. That's what that looks like um, for them. Now, speaking of um, doing what the constituents want and the people want, um, I am going to be releasing, or I have released, because you're going to actually, it's going to be released before this one, a um, recording um, on Canadian politics. I live in Alberta, 
And we already now have taken to calling our premier, um, Premier Trump, okay? He has that, again, that small, noisy contingency of people who are screaming about freedom. Um, and Alberta has the worst rate of infections per capita than any other province in this country. We are sitting at, it's I think 10.5 or 11 uh, percent of people are getting infected with COVID. Um, despite, you know, he, he comes out with these sort of wishy-washy um, policies, I guess you could say. Uh, it's not working. Okay, so I'm going to be taking a look at Canadian politics, uh, COVID in Canada, and seeing if we can get a handle on that. So if you're at all interested in Canadian politics, um, you can look for that video also. Again, I want to extend my gratitude and my thanks to everybody who has lent their support and kindness, their sympath sympathy, their understanding. Um, for everything, frankly, that's going on in my life, whether it is well wishes about selling the house and finding a new one, whether it is for, you know, um, Crystal's passing and our family recovering from that, whether it is for Skittles' surgery, he's doing really well. We're so grateful. Um, and, of course, for all the support that you give the Soul Print channels, I am humbled. I truly am. And just a final note, I am now booking kind of early, mid-January for private readings. So if anybody is interested, um, this is sort of a good time to get on board. And um, we can set that up for you. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of the support. Until next time. You guys are amazing. Amazing. Until next time, take care. Be well. We'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.